Okay, so I got the packaging open, and you see here now we have the adapter ready to go for install. These are the shrink wraps that you're going to use when you actually connect the wiring harness. And the wiring harness has a total of eight wires, um, and the actual uh, where each one of those wires goes is covered depending on uh, your uh, swap scenario. Uh, is all covered here in the instructions, um, the switch configuration, um, and, and all those things related to your install. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send us an email, contact at swaphelper.com. What I'm going to do right now is go ahead and get this set up on my F350, which has a 12-valve in it, and walk you through the programming process uh, so you guys can see how that works. All right, so... Uh, in this case, I have the wiring harness connected to the truck. Now, normally you would never leave the wires this long. Uh, I only did this for filming this video so I could do it out here on the table and show you guys what's going on. So when you do your install, you're going to want to cut these wires down uh, to an appropriate length. You know, it's just as much as you need. You don't want bundles of wires, you know, zip tied in a corner somewhere. So first thing we're going to do with the adapter, we're going to take a look at the instructions for our swap application and set the dip switches accordingly. Now, this is a 2003 6.0 truck uh, that now has a uh, 12 valve in it, and so the only switch that we're going to have to turn on is going to be number three. So just use a small screwdriver and I'll turn that on. You'll notice that the green programming wire is currently disconnected. You do not want to program the adapter until uh, we have verified the TAC functionality, making sure that we've got the switch settings correct and that everything's working like it's supposed to. Programming the adapter is the final and last step when we know everything is working and we want to save this switch configuration to the adapter's memory. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and get this plugged in, turn on the ignition, and show you what the adapter looks like unprogrammed. Okay, I've turned the ignition on on the truck. And if we take a look at the adapter, we can see that we have the red LED is on. That means that we have power. And the program LED, the green LED, is blinking. That means that the adapter is currently in an unprogrammed state. You can see here, uh, dash, dash, dash indicates that it is unprogrammed. So at this point, what we're going to want to do is start the engine, verify that we have sync light, and that we have a stable tack. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is go ahead and start the truck and we'll keep an eye on that sink light. Okay, we can see here that we have a nice solid sink light. That means that the adapter is happy with the signal that it's receiving from the 12 valve. The next thing we're going to do is go inside the truck and verify that the tachometer is working properly in the truck. Okay, we are now in the truck. You can see that the tack is nice and stable. Please disregard the uh, trans temp. This truck has a ZF6 swap, and uh, so uh, just disregard that. Uh, you'll go ahead and want to just make sure that it's nice and smooth through the RPM range that it holds nice and stable. Which as you can see, this is nice and smooth. So at this point, now we know that the adapter has proper sync, the uh, tachometer is working properly in the truck. Now is the time that we're gonna go ahead and program. So I'm gonna go back outside uh, and we're gonna go through that process. Okay, at this point we verified uh, correct operation of the tachometer. We've gone ahead and shut the truck off and now we're prepared and ready to program the adapter to save this switch configuration to memory. So what, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this green wire and we'll go ahead and remove that little piece of insulation there. And then what we're going to do is connect this to the positive terminal on the battery. It's really that simple. You're going to use the included alligator clip just to hold it on there and uh, we're going to do that real quick. So let me go ahead and hook that up. Okay, you'll see here that we have the uh, wire held on by uh, the alligator clip because we're just going to temporarily connect this and then all we have to do is turn the ignition on. We should get a, a solid green programming light and then turn the ignition off 
and disconnect this green, green wire and then we should have the switch configuration permanently saved to the adapter's memory. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the ignition and let's keep an eye on that program light. Okay, as you can see here, the program light is now solid, which as indicated here, means that it's in programming mode. So this is as simple as that. It is done, completed. We'll go ahead and uh, shut off the ignition, and this LED, the green LED, should permanently turn off once we disconnect this uh, green programming wire. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that the ignition is off, I need to disconnect the green programming wire, which we've done here. At this point, you're going to want to use one of the included shrink wraps and put this over the end of the green wire. Probably cut that off flush, put this over it, and then uh, heat it up and bend it over like that so that this doesn't you do not want it to come in contact with uh, a 12 volt supply because it'll put it back in programming mode on startup okay so now that's disconnected since it's programmed if you like you can turn all the switches to off it really doesn't matter now if you set the switches it's not going to read the switches anymore unless you hook this wire up again so we can leave them off if you're moving this to another truck you can reset the switches, hook up the programming wire again one time like we did, um, and it'll save the uh, updated switch configuration. So now that it's programmed and done, let's go ahead and start up the truck and make sure everything's functioning properly. Okay, so as we can see, power is good, sync is good, program is now off. So that means that the switches are saved, everything looks good, and now let's go take a look in the truck to verify the tax operating properly, which I saw it when I started the truck, so I know it is. But we'll go ahead and take one more look at it. And this is done, this is ready for final install. Uh, everything's done, make sure that you solder all your wires together. Uh, you know, do it, keep your wiring as clean and as tidy as possible. Make sure these leads are no longer than they need to be. And uh, you're good to go for thousands of miles, hundreds of thousands of miles, maybe millions of miles of trouble-free tachometer operation. One more look at the tachometer, now completely programmed. Um, final install. Everything works nice and, nice and smooth, so this installation is completed. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email, contact at swaphelper.com. Thank you for your time.